Hey guys, today we will be starting up a new Pico Reef tank, so stay tuned until the end to see the cost and my future plans for this tank. So I had a leftover bucket of sand for my 20 gallon nano tank, but I don't think this is enough to cover the bottom of this new Pico tank, so I think I'm gonna head over to Petco or something to buy five more pounds. Before I left, I went ahead and poured in the sand to see where I was at. I could have done a cool shallow to deep sand bed, but I think my wave maker is just gonna push it around. So I decided against the idea. I ended up buying a bag of Caribsea's Ocean Direct Sand from PetSmart. I should have turned off the wave maker before I added the sand, but with new sand it always gets cloudy. I went ahead and installed my sponge filter and added the heater. The sand is a little bit too fine, but it's the only bag they offered. So I will have to deal with that for now. For my light, I was thinking about getting the AI Prime 16 HD, but I needed to save some money. So I went on Amazon and got the Nikru Hydro Reef 30. The light itself isn't bad at all, it's pretty small and compact and has a bunch of LEDs along with some different channels. Others have said good things about it, so we'll see how it does. The mount wasn't hard to build at all, it's really similar to AI Hydro's um, HMS mount. I kind of just estimated where the light will be based on this example picture on the manual. The glass on this aquarium is a little thin. So I had to make sure not to over tighten the screws and it even tells you in the manual. But the light did end up sitting just fine. Here it looks a little goofy in the back but you can't really tell when you look at the front. Here's the light after plugging it in. As you can see there's a bunch of LEDs in there. It has a blue and white channel on the controller along with some options for the timer. If you press the buttons for blue and white it adjusts the intensity levels. But I'm about to head to the local fish store, so I'll see you guys in a bit. One hour later. All right, we are back. Here is the clownfish temperature acclimating to my other tank. If you guys didn't know, all clownfish start off as males. So the rock I picked out was a little bit wider than the tank, so I took a hammer to it. But unfortunately, I accidentally broke off the left side of the rock that was holding up the cave. Thankfully, super glue gel takes care of everything and it doesn't look half as bad, so I'm gonna drop it off in the tank now. So I put the new aquascape inside the tank, but before I did, I squeezed the sponge filter, which made the dust come out, so it's a little bit cloudy again. But the rock looks pretty nice inside this tank, and I'm pretty happy with my choice. For the clownfish, we decided to name him Pixu. We went to go eat earlier at a place that had the word in his name, so my girlfriend just named him Pixu. I searched it up, and Pixu means Lucky symbol for wealth and good fortune, so let's hope that comes true. So unfortunately, the Pico tank isn't quite ready to add him in yet because it's still cloudy. So he's gonna have to sleep over at the other tank tonight. I didn't want my other two clownfish to pick on him, so I put him inside a DIY container where I just poke some holes. To help cycle my tank, I'm using Fritz's Turbo Start. I also added some biomedia from my other tank to help seed the rock. Here are some of the sizes of the bottles that um, correlate to the size of your tank. So I bought the one ounce today because the tank is only six gallons. 
The directions say to first make sure your water is free of any chlorine, but I'm using RODI, so I'm fine. Since I don't have any UV sterilizers and skimmers, we can move on to the next step. Make sure you shake the bottle really well and add it in before you add in any livestock. I ended up pouring more into the tank later. The next morning. So here he is the next day. I'm about to move him into this other container since the one inside the tank has holes. But the Pico tank is pretty much ready to go. If you guys look inside the tank, you can see these little ball cylinder looking shaped things. This is the bio media I was talking about that came from my other tank. So I'm gonna start adding water into the container from the Pico tank until the container is almost full. It should take around 30 minutes or so, so I'll update you guys in a bit. All right, here we go. Ended up catching him with my hand because nets can do some damage to fish and your hand's much gentler. But did you guys see how fast he darted out of my hand? That was pretty quick. Seems he's taking a liking to this bottom right corner. I also ended up adding a frag of other chaos into the tank because it was quite empty. I'll be adding more corals in the future, so hope you guys stay for an update. Here is Pixie about 30 minutes after I added him into the tank. I left the camera on him for like an hour, but I'm not even kidding. He didn't move like an inch away from this corner. I feel like clownfish, when you first get them, they just swim into the glass, against the glass, until they learn about their own reflections. I'm gonna start talking about the whole cost of this setup. So starting with the equipment, I got the tank for $35 at a Petco sale. They have it pretty often and it's usually about half off. So if you wanna set one up, just stay in a watch at Petco. The sand was about five bucks from PetSmart. The light, which is usually one of the bigger investments inside the hobby, was about 70 bucks. The sponge filter was from my last tank, but it was about $15. The turbo quick start was about 20 bucks. And the heater was also from my previous tank and it cost about $15. I forgot about the rock. The Carib Sea Live Rock was $50. So it came in at about $8 a pound, which is a lot actually. For a grand total, we have 210 bucks for the equipment. And about a week or two after my nitrates reduced a little bit, I plan on getting 360 shrimp and a pom-pom crab. I think along with those, I'm gonna add in mostly soft corals and maybe just some easy LPS. With all being said, we have a whopping total of 350 bucks. Pixu is not eating frozen food yet, or he's just camera shy, but he did eat a few pellets, not all of them. I think I actually added too much. As for the future of this tank, I did some research and sexy shrimp get along really well in groups. People say they do eat some LPS if they're not well fed, so I don't plan on getting any expensive ones like I mentioned. Um, I need this tank to be low maintenance because one, it is a Pico tank. Two, because my 20 gallon nano is actually my top priority. And three, I need a tank that can do just fine on its own because when school gets busy, um, the tank will take care of itself, especially since I'm going into my last semester. Let me know in the comment section what corals I should add to the tank. I'm gonna stray away from posting Xenia though. Another thing I wanted to add is that people define Pico tanks differently. To me, Pico is usually less than 8 gallons. Others may say less than 5. Some say it's 3, so it all just depends. If you're new here and are planning to set up a Pico tank, I definitely recommend that you do a lot of research before getting into this thing. It takes a lot of dedication and time to take care of these animals. But if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'm trying to hit a goal of 500 subscribers by the end of 2023 and 100 by the end of February. So if you guys could help me out by subscribing and leaving a like at the end of the video, that'd be great. I hope all you guys are doing well. Um, stay tuned, I'll be giving updates. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, enjoy some clips of Pixu.